Claudia Jones was a Trinidad-born journalist and activist. As a child, she migrated with her family to the United States, where she became active, politically active in the Black nationalist movement through communism. Using false names, Jones' self-protective and disinformation, as a result of her political views, she was deported in 1955 and subsequently resided in the United Kingdom, where she found Britain's first black major newspaper, the West Indian Gazette, in 1958. Claudia Vera Carambach was born in Belmont, Port of Spain, Trinidad, on February 21, 1915. She was nine years old when her family migrated to New York City following the post-war cocoa price crash in Trinidad. Her mother died five years later, and her father found, eventually found work supporting the family. Jones won the Theodore Roosevelt Award for Good Citizenship at her junior high. In 1932, due to poor living conditions, she was struck with tuberculosis, a condition that irreparably damaged her lungs and played there for the rest of her life. She graduated from high school, but her family was so poor they couldn't afford to attend graduation. Despite being academically bright, classed as an immigrant woman, she was eventually severely limited in her career choices. So instead of going to college, Jones worked in a factory in a laundry and subsequently other retail work in Harlem. During this time, she joined a drama group and began to write a column called Claudia and Comments for a Harlem Journal. In 1936, trying to find organizations that were supporting the Scots world, she joined the Young Communist League USA. In 1937, she joined the editorial staff of the Daily Worker. Rising by 1938, she became the editor of the Weekly Review. After the Young Communist League became the American Youth for Democracy during World War II, Jones became his editor of his monthly journal, The Spotlight. After the war, Jones became executive secretary of the Women's National Commission and secretary for the Women's Commission of the Communist Party USA. In 1952, she took the same position in the Council of Peace. And in 1953, she took over ed- editorship of the Negro Affairs. As a member of the Communist Party and the Black National Feminist, Jones identified black women's oppression known as triple oppression. Her ideology consisted of a conceptual concept of race, class, and gender within the Marxist lens. Her focus on anti and coalition managed by the working class leadership fueled the involvement of women. Now, on the, on the oppression tip, you know, the concept of black women triple oppression was popularized within the Communist Party by her. Jones believed that black women's triple oppression based on race, class, and gender preceded all forms of oppression. Additionally, she theorized by the feeling of black by freeing black women who are the most oppressed of all people, freedom will be gained for all people who suffer from race, class, and gender oppression. Jones saw the Communist Party focus on the oppression of the white working class male, and she criticized the party for lack of recognition of specific oppression for black women in her article, to the end of the problem of the Negro woman. To be sure, Jones was articulated as socialist feminism that took into account not just race, but disparity struggles among all women. Jones felt that black women experienced a unique form of oppression that was not acknowledged by feminism. She argued that the liberation of black women, black nationalism, would be much more achievable. As she put it, once the Negro woman has taken action, the militancy of the whole Negro people and thus the anti-imperialism coalition will be greatly enhanced. Jones' views influenced other communist women and black activists such as Angela Davis and the Capanche River Collective. Davis writes about triple oppression in her book, Race, Role, in her book, Race, Women, Race, and Class, from 1981. She was the main big theorist in the Communist Party. And then Jones' best piece, known as the Neglected Women, appeared in a 1949 magazine of political affairs. It exhibited her development well later became known as intersectional analysis of the Marxist framework. In it, she wrote, The bourgeoisie fears the militancy of the, of the Negro woman, and for good reason. Capitalists know, far better than any than many progressives seem to know, that once the Negro woman began to take action, the militancy of the whole Negro people and thus the anti imperial coalition is racially enhanced. Historically, Negro women have been the guardian and the protector of the Negro family. As a mother, as a Negro, and as a worker, ne- the Negro women rights fight against wiping out the Negro family against Jim Crow, ghetto existence, which destroyed the health and morale and the very lives of millions of her sisters and brothers and children. Viewed in this light, it's not accidental that the American bourgeoisie has intensified its oppression, not only of the Negro people in general, but of the Negro women in particular. 
nothing so exposed the drive of the fascist the fascination the fascization of the nation as a callous attitude which the bourgeoisie displays and cultivated towards the Negro woman, which is a fact and it still goes on today. On a sidebar tip, the Negro woman is the most the black woman is the most oppressed woman on the planet. An elected member of the National Committee of the Communist Party, Jones also organized and spoke at events, which urged you spoke at events as a result of her membership of the Communist Party and various activity. In 1948, she was arrested and sentenced for the first of four spells in prison. Incarcerated on Ellis Island, she was third when deportation to Trinidad. The following a hearing of the Migration and Natural Service, she was found in violation of the McCarran Act, which for being an alien, a non-U.S. citizen, had joined the Communist Party. Several witnesses testified her role in the party, and she identified herself as a party member since 1936 when completing her alien registration on December 24, 1940, in conformity with the Registration Act. She was ordered deported on December 21, 1950. In 1951, at age 36, in prison, she suffered her first heart attack. In that same year, she was tried and convicted with 11 others, including her friend Elizabeth Gurley Flynn, by the Un-American Activities Committee under the Smith Act, specifically activities against directed towards the U.S. government. The Supreme Court refused to hear their appeal. In 1955, Jones began her sentence of a year and a day in a federal reformatory of women at Alwyn Prison in, um, at Alwyn in West Virginia. She was released on October 23, 1955. She was refused entry into Trinidad and Tobago, partly because of, her, of the British colonial governor, Major General Sir Hubert Elvin Rance, considered that she may be proved troublesome. She was eventually offered clemency in the United Kingdom on humanitarian grounds, and the federal authorities agreed to allow her and when she agreed to cease contesting the deportation. On December 7, 1955, at the Harlem Hotel Teresa, 350 people met to see her off. Jones arrived in London two weeks later and at the time of building of the Empire Wimbush community a vast expansion of the British African-American community. However, in engaging the political community that she had left in the United States, she was disappointed to find that many British communists were hostile to black women. Land in England at the time when many landlords and shops and even separate government, government established display signs saying no Irish, no colored, no dogs, Jones found a community that needed active organization. She began to get involved in the British African community by organizing both access to basic facilities as well as equal rights. Supported by her friends, Trevor Carter, Nadia Cathouse, Amy Ashwell Garvey, and Berla McBurney, and Pearl Prescon, and a lifelong mentor, Paul Robeson, Jones campaigned against raising racism in housing, education, and unemployment. She addressed peace rallies at the Trade Union Congress and visited Japan, Russia, and China, where she met Mao Zedong. In the early 1960s, despite failing health, she helped organize the 1962 Immigration Act, will make it harder for nine whites to immigrate again into Britain. She also campaigned for the release of Nelson Mandela and spoke out against racism in the workplace. From experience in the United States, Jones knew that the people without voice was lands for the slaughter. Therefore, in 1958, above a barbershop in Brixton, she founded and therefore edited the anti-imperialist, anti-racist paper, the West Indian Gazette, and the Afro-Asian Caribbean News. The paper became a key contribution to the rise of consciousness in the black British community. She wrote her last public essay, The, the Caribbean Community in Britain in Freedom Ways, in the summer of 1964. The paper served as a catalyst for quickening awareness and social development and political development of West Indians, Afro Asians, and their friends. Its editorial stands for United Dependent West Indies full economic and social political equality and respect for human dignity of West Indians and Afro-Asians in, in Britain and for the peace among all Commonwealth and all world peoples. Always strive for CAS, the WIG, folding, and four editions after Jones' death in 1964. Four months after lasting the WIG, race riots broke off in August 1958 in Nighton Hill, London and the Robin Hood Chase Nottingham. In view of the racially division, racially driven analysis of these events by existing British daily newspapers, Jones had begun convincing receiving visits from the members of the Black British community and also various national leaders responding to the concerns of the citizen, including Chetta Jagger of the British Guyana, Norman Manley of Jamaica, Eric Williams of Trinidad Tobago, 
as well as Philip Shannon Alfred and Carly Bring of the West Indians Federation, and also CLR James, who her and were pretty good friends. As a result, the Nottingham came out, as a result of this, it came out to be a carnival, which still goes on to this day. Mm, in her honor. Jones died on Christmas Eve, 1964, at the age 49. And she, you know, so, and they had a funeral and a big, large ceremony for her. And um, this is when the African women, you know, that don't really get talked about, you know, are revolutionary. And this is what the thing is about, about producing and showing people that, you know, what Jones said is really true and it's not really talked about as much. And that's why we done this video to put her more on a perspective of what she was doing for our people. The Black Pan-Africanist, the woman Jones, the woman Claudia Jones. You know, the organization was founded in 1982 to support and empower women and families of African-Arabian heritage. She was named to the 100 list of, of, of Great Black Britons. There's a plaque, as you see in the video, in, 19, um, in 2008, there's a blue plaque. Caribbean Carnival Jones is the mother of Caribbean Carnival in Britain. Um, a lot of things, she wrote many works too. As, as you said, she was a great writer, you know what I'm saying? There was a commemoration that took place on two, June 2014, if you remember of her um, 100th anniversary of her birth. You know, this led to new revelation discovery by Claudia Jones, not limited to three printed biographies or a film biography. The community supported a Claudia Jones 100 day and 100 anniversary of her birth in Kingston Park Estate Central on February 21st, 2015. This is guided to us showing two main residents she lived in in London and the former West Indian Gazette office nearby. There's also a celebration at the Cloth in Piedmont, Port of Spain, Trinidad, Tobago, near her birthplace on the same day. The day is associated with being held in Claudia Jones organization in Hackney, which featured the screaming of the film Looking for Claudia by Z Nina Reynolds. So there's films on her and stuff like that, but we're not really it's not really discussed of the impact she had as an international organizer on two different on Europe and the United States and Caribbean and things she done. So when we talk more about Claudia Jones, we missing out on the fact that she established the triple depression the, the triple the black woman's triple oppression which still goes on today, and not really been the focus of nobody of any of any black nationalist group or any there since then, has been a um, a promotion of this type of lifestyle. You know what I'm saying of of her theory. If you free the black woman and the black woman being the most militant, she would free everybody else. Does you, you know? So it's not really like I said. It's not really discussed about that about her and women's thing. And she was right on that. And I still believe in that theory. I believe in that to be fact, not even on theory. So we're going to end this video on the last words. The bourgeoisie is fearful of the militancy of the Negro woman, and for good reason. Capitalists know far better than many progressives seem to know that once the Negro woman has taken, began to take action, the militancy of the whole Negro people, and thus the imperialist coalition is greatly enhanced. Historically, the Negro woman has been the guardian and the protector of the Negro family. As a mother, as a Negro, and as a worker, Negro women rights against wiping out the Negro family against Jim Crow, ghetto existence, which destroys the health of morale, and the very lives and millions of sisters and brothers and children. Viewing in this life is not accidental, and that the American bourgeoisie has intensified its impression, not only of the Negro people in general, but Negro women in particular. Nothing so exposed to drive this fact, not factorization.